Okay, so I'm going to uh, talk with you now about creating green washrooms. It's the whole reason why EcoProd was started in the first place, and it's the it's the ethos behind everything we do. We've actually put together a publication called the Green Washroom Guide. There are some hard copies around, but you can also download the most up-to-date version from our website. It's one of the key areas of wastage in every building. Um, I expect we've all had the experience, you're going to a hub in London or motorway service station, I can guarantee you, wherever you go, water is being wasted in pretty much every washroom in the UK. And we're here to help you significantly. We've worked with many large blue chip companies here in the UK. In fact, the McDonald's story is probably a good one just to mention that we actually man managed to get them to meet their water reduction strategy just with one product. Cuts your energy use and cuts and reduces your carbon. As Jake has just said, there is a significant number of carbon related to water. There is an industry recognized formula in the actual volume of water you're using or saving, but as Jake has just alluded to, you've also got all the ancillary items of carbon attached to the delivery of water. And it's basic common sense, it's gonna save you money. Now, we often go to, um, say, large corporations and we speak to the estates director or facilities manager, and they say, oh, we, no, we you know, haven't really got time to look at this and so on and so forth. And then you send the same communication to the CFO and he suddenly's on the phone saying, have you spoken to the rest of my team about this? Because he gets it. CFOs, they see how they get it, because it's saving money. So I just want to talk about washroom design for a few moments. There's this a couple of gentlemen in the audience, designer contracts who've known me for many years. Uh, we've worked alongside them. And I've got about 30 years experience as a mechanical engineer. And one thing I always really infuriates me is people don't get the design of their washrooms right. They don't think through what the washroom is being used for, the type of function that you're actually looking after in the space you're managing, and at the end of the day, if you go to a uh, venue anywhere and the washroom experience is bad, you never forget it. It's always there in the back of your mind. So the first thing we say to people is, your washrooms, is it for function or is it for form? Take a situation like Tottenham Stadium. In the corporate areas, it's form. They want image, they want finish. In the general area washrooms, the place has got to work. You've got thousands and thousands of people going through these washrooms and they've got to work. That's a actual general area washroom that we work with on a client and that is actually a stadium. So you can actually produce very high-end finished looking washrooms at not great expense. It's all achievable. When you're managing large venues like general area washrooms in this stadium you've got to, the first thing is you've got to look at the flow of use through that washroom a place like this you've got to have entrance and exits and depending on the volume of personnel you're looking after they've got to be a long way apart for that washroom to physically function and that third point there i go to lots of stadia not only here in the uk but around the world and that third point is always where the problems start. So you have a gender sign outside the entrance to the washroom and lo and behold there's also a sign outside the exit. So what happens? People both go, go both routes. So you've got two-way traffic in that washroom. It's bonkers. It won't work. You've got to go in the entrance and out of the exit and then what you do is you make sure you're managing your space within that washroom. Lay out between WC sinks, urinals and showers, urinals and showers where they're used, is very, very important. And don't have one more, one, more than one function taking place in the same immediate area. A classic case of this is Edinburgh Airport. They've just completely changed their washrooms because they found that where they had 
persons washing their hands and drying their hands in the same space was creating flow problems. So they've redesigned the whole washrooms so that as soon as you've washed your hands, you're moving through an area to dry your hands, albeit not too far away, but still enough space for anyone coming in behind you to go through the same process without causing traffic flow problems. Consider wash troughs for basins. The reason why I say that is you can reduce the depth consist very significantly, especially if you make sure you put a clean space in for the user's feet, and you can actually increase the number of persons using that wash trough by making sure you have wall-mounted taps correctly spaced apart. Try and avoid entrance and exit doors. Use, use staggered partitions. Um, a lot of uh, newer venues are doing this, and actually, actually has a very positive impact on the user's experience and especially hygiene. Correctly placed mirrors can make washrooms feel much bigger and create a luxury finish. That's a, that's a fact. If you, get the, if you get mirrors and you get lighting right in a washroom, even if you can't afford to go to a much higher level of floor or wall finish, you will create an ambience that everyone says, yeah, that washroom <coughs> experience was good. Cleaning and maintenance. Once the uh, venue's been built, once the washrooms are installed, they've then got to be cleaned and maintained for every day thereafter. So get the ventilation right to minimize odor and keep humidity at the right level. Creates a better washroom experience. It means getting your extraction right, getting that washroom under positive air pressure so that the flow of air through that washroom is correct. Let's say use warm floor finishes that assist in keeping a hygienic washroom. In in corporate areas, yes, where there's form, maybe the cleaning level is not quite uh, as onerous, but certainly in general area washrooms, I mean, hygienic wall cladding, hygienic floor finishes, they're going to last a lot longer and they're going to be much easier for the janitorial staff to keep on top of. Third point here I'm going to just dwell on. Um, I went to a supposedly brand new academy school about six weeks ago and believe it or not that school was opened four years ago those buildings were opened four years ago and that school academy group have still got the main contractor on retention to something to a level of eight percent of contract value so that that school academy have got quite a few thousands of pounds tucked away still and there's no way, there's absolutely no way, that that contractor's going to get that money back. I can tell you that now. And I'll tell you for why, because when you go into the washrooms, that third point is what they haven't addressed. So from day one, after handover, practical completion, there was water ingress throughout all those washrooms. It's got underneath the flooring. They haven't thought about the vanity tops. So. The water and the, the basin and tap scenario is wrong. So when you use those basins, the actual um, hand washing process means quite a lot of water in, ends up on the vanity tops. And then what does it do? Because they haven't been installed correctly, it flows to the front and it's dripping off the front. So all those vanity tops and all that flooring is ruined. They have got to start again. So that school academy is basically saying, guys, no practical completion yet, sort that lot out, and then you can have your money. But it's going to cost them loads more than the, probably the value of their retention. So I expect there's going to be an insurance claim. So that is very, very key, that point there. Keep to a dedicated schedule of planned maintenance coupled with accurate reporting. And this actually makes sure that your reactive maintenance budget costs are reduced. People say, oh, we haven't got time to do it, or we haven't got the processes in place. That's ridiculous. Because if you do it from day one, you won't find yourself in a reactive situation. Yes, everything's got a failure rate. Yes, everything does break. Yes, there is vandalism. We all, all agree that that is going to take place. But as to the core of what you're doing, make sure you've got that process in place right from day one. So when the washrooms, building, whatever it is, is being handed over to you as a client, Make sure you're working with your facilities team to put in place a program so you can say that 
these washrooms are going to be maintained according to the quality of what we want to expect for our clients and customers. And then make sure you're putting in place energy and water use um, initiatives. Presence detected low energy lighting. It's pretty, pretty common now, but it's a very quick win, especially with LED lighting. You're gonna, the payback is going to be very quick, probably as quick as six months. Intelligent sensor taps. How many times you go to a washroom and if you've used a self-closing non-concussive tap, you've walked away, you've gone out of the washroom, the tap's still running. They all fail, especially um, the hot taps because the mechanisms, the mechanisms get loose with temperature. They, they don't last at all. Um, <coughs> the other thing with the Conti Ranger taps, which we market here in the UK, is they've got intelligent sensor technology. They actually detect the environment in which they're operating. So that's not only the light level available, it's the size of the basin or sink that it's um, situated within. That, uh, that intelligent sensor technology is taken into consideration all those things, <laughs> and they self-commission. So that's a key point for the facilities team. Those taps self-commission as soon as you start them. Waterless urinals, 100% quick win. Um, that was the reason for Tottenham putting them in here, in the, all the general area washrooms. So they trialled they trial the Euromac technology in the old White Hart Main Stadium for the um, last season of the old stand. And we were told by Populous, who were the architects at the time, no, we can't have waterless urinals, we can't have uh, urinal bowls, we've got to have urinal troughs. So I said, why? So they said, oh, well, it's a, it's a stadium, you need that type of environment for footfall because of the number of male users. I said, no way, no. So they said, well, well why? So I said, well, I'll prove to you that your theory is wrong. So they said, okay, fair, fair enough, go, on, go away and prove it. I said, okay, fine. So I got in touch with the um, uh, stadium development there, director for here, Andrew Downs, and he said, okay, you've got an open space, put your product in. So I said, yeah, fine, okay, we'll do that. And we monitored it for that last season. Do you know what? The footfall through those washrooms with the urinal bowls was better than it was with troughs. <coughs> so they went back to Populous and said, guys, we're not having your troughs that you specified. We're having Euromat your urinal bowls. Because, and I'll tell you why, the ladies won't get this, but if you've got your own personal space, you will urinate quicker. <laughs> it is a fact. <laughs> okay, and you see the Jacobs um, the group's laughing like a drain over there. Uh, it is true. It's actually true. So we proved that last season, that those wash, that washroom, honestly, it, the footfall through there was brilliant. Better than it was before. And the positive comments I had from the, the fans and the, and the staff was, it, it's brilliant. And the janitorial staff said, we want this product in the new stadium because there's no odour. It's easy to clean. Uh, there's nothing on the floor. It's brilliant. So that's all your own. Common sense. Showers with automated hygiene functions. This is another Conti specialist product here, and you'll hear more from Robert in a bit in a minute. There's shower, showering here in the UK. We have we have to get it right. I mean, there's quite hygiene and regulation uh, story behind these products. Legionella is very much on the radar, as we know. Um, go to a lot of large venue operators and. That's one thing they'll say. Do you know what, Marcus or the rest of our team, they'll say, we, we, don't, we know we've got a problem with Legion Health. We know we've got a problem with our reporting, our hygiene flashing. You'll hear more from Robert in a minute about CNX, this unique product from uh, Conti. <coughs> but there are also uh, new shower panels being um, launched by Conti, which pretty much eliminate any um, opportunity for Legion Health in your showering equipment. Low flush WCs. This, some guys from Siam in the audience here. They are also a very good quick win, but make sure you get it right. If you're going to go to low flush WC, <coughs> make sure your infrastructure is correct as well. Low energy hand dryers, again. And then centralised water management controls. This goes back to the CNX story from Conti. I was doing some work with an airport a, a while ago here in the UK, and I had to serve 
they actually wanted me to come back to them with a proposal on a uh, business package for retrofit to all their washrooms. And I said, look, the only way we can do that is if we can do an on-site survey, get some numbers, get some figures, get some pictures. And um, so they, they got an, an engineer to come around with me and he said, oh, this is great. I can do my tap temperatures and all my hygiene flushing whilst I'm walking around with you. I said, oh, okay, that's interesting. So we went to the first washroom and in he went, turned the first tap on. Then the next one, and I was doing my survey, and he got to the end, and he had turned the last one on, and he said, oh, how much longer mark is that? I said, need a few more minutes. So he said, that's fine, I'll just leave, leave him running. So he had all those taps running all the time I was there doing the survey, on to the next one. So I said to him, I said, the first tap more than met the demands and the regulation. The last one never did. So I said, how are you going to report on that? So he said, oh, don't matter, don't matter, don't, don't worry, I've done it, just yeah. tick, tick the box. So all the tap temperatures, oh, oh, it's roughly 40 degrees, 38 degrees. I said, you sure? So he said, yeah, 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 yeah I know the system. Oh, okay, interesting. Anyway, some six years ago, there was a facilities management director for a large complex in Scotland. That lady was charged for manslaughter because two members of the public contracted Legionella from using their washrooms. And the reason why she was charged for manslaughter was because she couldn't prove to the judge and the jury that the reporting that she had from her services team was accurate. They were there, the figures were there, but the judge said to them, said to her, how can you prove to me that they're not rigged figures? And she was charged, she was put away for a few years because she was the person responsible at the top. The buck stopped with her. Now, the reason why I say that is that subject is really gathering momentum here in the UK because of that incident. There was another incident similar to that with some children in uh, Belfast Royal Infirmary as well. And the thing about centralised water management controls, they can actually be linked to the BMS system in your in your. Uh, property, or whatever you're managing. And they don't tell lies, it's accurate reporting. You get your tap temperatures, you get your shower temperatures, you get your hygiene flush duration. The whole thing is 100% accurate. So you can bring up a report via your services team as a <coughs> manager and say, look guys, this is the report that the system's produced. It can't be rigged and you can adjust whatever you need to do to suit the type of environment you're looking after. Very, very, very key. Very, very, very key. Um, there's a number of um, things available on our website, resources. You've got the Water Sea Rhino Guide there. That was put together by the team at EcoProd. Obviously the EcoProd Green Washroom Guide. It's meant to be a thought-provoking document. Um, it's obviously got a lot of our products in there, but it's other ideas in there as well that we don't have um, necessarily an immediate answer for, but we do know partners in the industry that we, we can point in your direction to help you. Then the most recent document we've just um, made available is the EcoBrog Guide to Water Saving in Your Business. Likewise, it's a thought-promoting document. As Jacob's just said, go through these processes, go through these ideas, get a team together, water strategy, Read that. It'll give you some ideas to what to put in place and what conversations you need to have. Thank you very much.